Needle and Port Nature's, it's Mid-County Madness, it's Bum Phillips Bowl, it's, it's excitement. And without a doubt, you know, this game brings out the best in everybody, coaches and players alike. And it's huge, you know. Most people around here say it's the biggest game in Texas. I love the electricity that comes to the stadium whenever both sides are packed and both, bland, both bands are playing as loud as they can. It's one of those you throw out everything that happened before. You know, it doesn't matter what team has what record. Uh, it's been that way since I can remember. Your entire town, you know, people at the refineries working together, all the talk. The two communities are so interconnected. I think that's what makes the, the rivalry so uh, interesting. There ain't nothing like it. When you see a railroad track over, they're your friends, but on Friday night, they're your enemy. There was some friendships developed, but it, saw, it, it went away during the game. No face guards. And most of the time you had uh, busted teeth, lost a little few, I lost several. Bloody nose, blood was one of the first things you wanted to get to have a good game. As you start bleeding, it's time to go to work. We used to have a wooden totem pole in the, in the foyer over there, and they've, they've cut it down before. And uh, of course, we've had some people go over there and paint, paint the dog and burn in in the field. There's only a well, railroad track that separates us from uh, Needland and uh, if you're not from here, you don't know which town you're in. The kids, they know each other, they run around together, and it's like brothers playing, you know, they're going to try to beat each other bad. It's always been there because the kids are so close together. You know, we intermingled even at that time with all the kids from Nederland. You beat Port Nature Groves, you signed another contract. You know, you're doing good. <laughs> well, that's, that's the usual Mid-County Madness, no doubt. It's, it's the number one rivalry in the state of Texas, in my opinion. I've coached all over. and. Uh, when Port Natchez Groves and Needle get together, it, it's uh, it's fireworks every time. It's humbling to be in something like this. Uh, I mean, it, it's electric, uh, electricity in the air, and uh, the buildup is tremendous. If you look back at the games, usually it's unpredictable. Whatever you, you ever you thought was going to win, probably didn't. It's that kind of rivalry. Both me and my wife graduated from Needle and High School, class of '78 and '83, and both my boys graduated from Port Natchez High School, class of '05 and '08. Our neighbors are all Nederland and our city is Port Natchez, so we're trying to ride the fence line as best we can, but we got friends on both sides. Rodney, you've been cutting hair for over 40 years. You're a Nederland graduate. You're right across the street from the high school. Tell us, just being a part of the, the program right across the street, how proud are you of the Bulldogs and their tradition? There's nothing better, I'm telling you. I, I've been that just for you know, 40 some odd years, mm -hmm. okay? When I went to school, it was in your blood. Mm -hmm. If you grew up in Neyland, you're a Bulldog fan, and it's mm -hmm. lasted the rest of your life. I believe black and gold. I am the only black and gold building in Neyland. I don't allow purple in here. There were a couple of coaches in the rivalry, Bobby August for Nederland, Danny Malone for PNG, who who got mad at each other. They didn't mind their uh, dirty laundry getting out there in public during the week of the game. 1995 was actually the first year that we steadily promoted the game as Mid-County Madness, and it certainly stuck. The two teams are located in Mid-Jefferson County. There's a South County, North County, and Mid County, so hence Mid County Madness. And Tom's label just seemed perfect and it stuck. It is madness. Mid County Madness, the Bum Phillips Bowl. Very fitting that Bum Phillips would have his name attached to this rivalry. He started coaching in Nederland in 1951 and would later coach at Port Natchez Groves in the 60s. Bum Phillips was very successful here at Nederland High School. Check out this record. Bum Phillips was 7-12 and 12 in his first two seasons at Nederland, but would compile a 47-9-3 record over the next four years, including a 13-1 mark in 1956 when the Bulldogs played Garland for the state championship game. Bum Phillips, he played at French High School in Beaumont. Okay, he was a couple years ahead of me. But when Bum came here, he, uh, his old ex-coach was, uh, was coaching here then, and he hired Bum. Bum was a smart, good guy. Bum was probably one of the smartest defensive person you're gonna ever run into. He would just run an 18 defense and what nobody knew how to block against it. And Bum was a smart individual. Homer B. Johnson was an assistant coach for the Owls and remembers the Mud Bowl played at Nederland for the Class 3A state football title. It was great because people stood in line all night to get tickets. That's when uh, Bobby Boyd came along. He was the best player that ever played at Garland High. The kid kicked the field goal that never kicked the field goal in his life to win the game, 3-0. It was so wet that day, the umpires 
I had to hold the ball for him to snap the ball because it would float off. And that's how bad it was. You know, I'd be around when they talked to the team after the games and stuff, but most of the time I was around when they won, so. <laughs> At Needleland, he had beaten Port Natchez, uh, I believe, every year. In fact, Port Natchez won the state championship in 3A, and he beat them. He was kind of a legend that way. Emmett McKenzie would replace Bum Phillips in 1957. Under McKenzie, the Bulldogs won their only state title in school history when Nederland beat Sweetwater 20-7 in the Class 3A state championship game. The Bulldogs outscored their opponents 431-54 to in that season. That team there was the best defense and offensive team I've ever seen. When you win a championship and you're the best team in the state of Texas, that's hard to beat. Port Natchez, as they were known prior to the mid-1960s, recorded their only perfect record in school history in 1946 at 11-0 before going 10-1, winning their second straight regional crown in 1947, including a 71-0 victory over Nederland, outgaining the Bulldogs 554 total yards to negative 23. We beat them 71 to nothing, and they didn't make a first down. That was a record. <laughs> Ken Watson played on those Indians teams as a player before later becoming a coach for Port Natchez Groves. These two teams did not play each other from 1949 through 53. However, the Indians were very strong in the 1950s, winning the state title under head coach Gene McCollum in 53 by defeating Big Spring 24 to 13. The Indians lost to the Buckaroos of Breckenridge in the 1954 championship game 20 to 7 in McCollum's last year with the Indians. Port Natchez would finish the deal in 1955 with a 20-14 state title win over Garland in what Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine ranked as one of the top 10 championship games ever played in the Lone Star State. What a first impression by New Indians head coach Lou Ford, but Nederland fans are quick to point out that the Bulldogs won four straight games against Port Natchez during that span from 1954 to 57. That last year, Lewis coached Borden and LaBeouf were both seniors. And I said, how long are you going to coach Lewis? He said, well, he said, this year, LaBeouf gets out, and LaBoard gets out, and LaFord gets out. <laughs> we really want to thank Doug Bum wasn't the only one to wear the colors of both teams. THSCA Hall of Honor inductee Bruce Bush led Nederland to three district titles in a row and later coached at PNG under Doug Etheridge. That story and more when Mid-County Madness, the Bum Phillips Bowl continues. How do you like it there? Oh. A lot. <laughs> we love 5.2. They just gave us a home equity loan to remodel our kitchen. Yeah. They saved us over $500 a month by consolidating our credit cards. Wow. We're still trying to fix our credit. You think they'd give us a loan? Sure. At 5 Point, you're way more than just a credit score. She's right. It's really different there. Get a loan at 5 Point and get 1% cash back. 5 Point Credit Union, serving the community for over 80 years. Come to the Museum of the Gulf Coast where our area collection of the Jurassic period meets Janis Joplin with 60-plus Music Hall of Fame musicians, head coach Jimmy Johnson, Bum and Wade Phillips with 60-plus sports legends, and more than 35 notable people. Discover the arrival of early man to our area and the Civil War in the Gulf Coast region. Learn the stories behind this and so much more open seven days a week. Museum of the Gulf Coast, a museum like no other. I do know that I think every single one of us uh, went to Air It Out camp uh, that Coach Wardis always puts on and he used to put it on at Hardin Simmons when we were growing up and every one of us went to that. The quality of kids that start showing up at, at Coach Wardis' camps, the list of kids that he put in the Air It Out camps, it's a who's who of, of high school quarterbacks here in Texas and receivers. I'm a big fan of Abilene, of West Texas, of small schools. I think that's a place where all athletes in that area can go to and train and get better. Go to airitout.org for more details. The Dunes Condos in Port Aransas, Texas invite you to enjoy relaxation in one of 85 fully equipped condos with one, two, and three bedrooms. With a newly remodeled jacuzzi, pool, and sun deck, this family-friendly environment is also the closest condo to the water. The Dunes Condos is located near shopping, city parks, and the Caldwell Pier. Fish the jetties or just watch ships passing by. The Dunes Condos. Stay three nights and get the fourth night free. Surf over to thedunescondos.com. Welcome back to Mid-County Madness, the Bum Phillips Bowl. In 1963, Bum Phillips became the head coach for Port Natchez Groves, so now he had coached at both Nederland and at PNG. In fact, he spent two seasons here with the Indians. His quarterback was his son, Wade Phillips. 
you know, my dad was the head coach at UTEP, or Texas Western at that time. Port Nature just hired him, gave him a raise, took three coaches with him and gave them all a raise. So, you know, they wanted him and uh, the first year we beat Neyland, so. We jumped out and had a great first half. He had 21 to nothing. Bum Phillips had just come to Port Nature at that time and Bum had quite a reputation. Came back and onside kicked twice during the second half, recovered the onside kicks, goes in, scores right in the game, goes for two points, and wins the game 22 to 21 in quite a dramatic ball game, and that was in 1963. Uh, I know my junior year, we had a good quarterback named Glenn David that threw the ball real well and uh, helped us beat Port Natchez in a big ball game, which won the district championship for us as well our junior year. Bum's son, Wade Phillips, was a good quarterback for the Indians, but Mike Simpson had NFL skills with pure speed for the purple and white. Here's Bum discussing his speedster in the backfield. You know, he played at Port Natchez, then he came to Houston and played there. And then uh, we drafted him at San Diego, the Chargers. And he came out there, and of course, he was defensive back. That's what he played. See, at times, I had him run in pads. I mean, complete uniform. And Mike Simpson ran a 4 4 5 4 yard dash in full gear. Following Bum in 1965, after seven years as an assistant coach, was Ken Watson, who took the reins through 1972. PNG won a district title in 1968 for the first time in seven seasons, but a tie to Nederland was like kissing your sister, as the saying goes. Of the eight years, we tied them twice and beat them six times. At that time, they didn't play ties off. We had some good good football players, and we had a heck of a ball game my senior year. It ended up 35-35 tie. Greg Davis was a quarterback at PNG, went to McNeese, and Tommy Landry was a tailback, went to Texas. We had Steve Fleming, who ran wild. Uh, he went to the University of Texas and was behind Steve Wooster. I mean, it was an unbelievable game. Had them 35-35, and actually I caught the tying touchdown, so and my claim to fame, you know. In 1969, PNG faced the Nederland Bulldog team who had five shutouts coming into the contest. PNG's Robert Giblin blocked a kick to help the Indians win. From there, Giblin went on to play eight years in the NFL. Little did Coach Watson know at the time that the 1969 season was the first of 15 consecutive victories for PNG over Nederland. Watson had some great players, including Jeff the Jet Bergeron, who was arguably the best running back to ever suit up for the Indians. In the 1970s, the Jet had 67 TDs and almost 4,000 rushing yards. Speed kills, and Jeff Bergeron was a huge lift for PNG. You know, we had a lot of great athletes at the time we played. We had big kids that, uh, that played well and uh, were real athletic. We were eight and two my sophomore year, and nine and one my junior, and eight and two my senior. And you know, because you lost the game, you stayed home. You didn't go to the playoffs. Doug Etheridge replaced Ken Watson as the head coach for Port Natchez Groves in the 1973 season, and ushered in one of the most dominant eras of the heated rivalry, winning all 11 of his matchups with Nederland. In 1974, a controversial touchdown reception helped PNG keep the streak alive against the Bulldogs who were led by current Cinco Ranch head coach Don Clayton at quarterback. You know, they threw the ball up in the end zone and Kyle Aguilar, a uh, heck of a tight end, jumped and he's 6'6 and uh, he got the ball and we didn't. And, uh, you know, it just depends on which side of the fence you're on. Did he did he push somebody to get to the ball or, or not? Uh, it just depends on how you look at it. But uh, bottom line, he made a play. Our quarterback, Mike Habbard, threw a uh, pass to Kyle Aguilar, who was our uh, tight end, 6'6". And it was, you know, a back of the end zone catch, and Nederland felt that Kyle had pushed off on the uh, on the play, but we ended up scoring and won the game with 80 seconds left. So that's, and it, you know, they still bring that up. PNG would reach the state semifinals in 1974 before falling to Brazoswood 14 to seven. But the stage was set for a serious run in 1975, not seen in 20 years on the reservation. Doug's son, Richie, wore number 20 and was a great quarterback in an offensive system that featured the I formation, which was perfect for this slew of running backs. I played quarterback uh, from junior high on up into high school. I needed to, to, to do well and, and make sure that I earned my stripes. I think I did fine there. 1965 All-District cornerback Bruce Bush, who played at Nederland, was hired by Etheridge in 1975 to help coach the Indians to the Class 4A state title. To go back and coach 
and be a part of it again is a very special time in my life. It's a good day to have a Mike's old fashioned soda fountain right here on Port Natchez Avenue. You know, Port Natchez Groves had a lot of success in the 1970s. Doug Etheridge had a lot to do with that. The head coach was very successful in a run that included the 1975 state championship against Odessa Permian. Port Natchez Groves earned their third state title with a 20 to 10 victory over the Panthers at Texas Stadium, which was the previous home of the Dallas Cowboys in Irving. We had a great following and we had a great crowd and we played outstanding ball to win the state championship. One of our defensive ends hit their ball carrier, carrying the ball and the ball popped up and our quarterback caught it in the air and went 60 yards for the touchdown. That was the big play of the game. Words can't really describe it because uh, just winning the state championship, you're obviously on cloud nine, it's just incredible feeling. Probably the best one was the one when the team was picking up dad after the Odessa Premier game. They said, ho, 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 we beat the mojo. <laughs> hey, he was one of the best guys that you ever want to be around. He had a way of uh, getting everything out of his players and uh, everybody wanted to play for him. I feel very honored and blessed to be a part of a team that was able to uh, go to the state championship. That's a very difficult thing to accomplish. Port Natchez Groves would battle another historic team at Cowboy Stadium in 1977 when the largest crowd to ever watch a high school football game up to that time in Texas saw Plano slip past PNG in front of 47,340 fans. Plano game, we had some kids hurt. We lose the game. We, we did not play as well as we had been playing. We had opportunities to win four in a row, but we didn't take advantage of it. Ironically enough, Nederland defensive back Steve DeRuin would later become the Bulldogs head coach to end the 15 game losing streak to PNG in 1984. 13 to seven. And it came down to the last play of the game. You know, they threw a, a ball in the end zone and a guy by the name of David Chatelaine uh, jumped up, intercepted it, and the game was over. The whole town of Nederland going totally berserk. I was on the Nederland sideline when the game ended that night. It was very special to see how wound up that, that the whole community got over just finally beating the team they wanted to beat the most. I was on the team that we beat them for the first time. We had beat them in 20 years and rushed the field after the game. And at the time, we had a fence. It didn't keep them out. Nederland's Larry Newman forms a new streak when Mid-County Madness, the Bum Phillips Bowl, continues. How do you like it there? Oh, a lot. <laughs> we love 5.2. They just gave us a home equity loan to remodel our kitchen. Yeah, they saved us over $500 a month by consolidating our credit cards. Wow, we're still trying to fix our credit. You think they'd give us a loan? Sure, at Five Point, you're way more than just a credit score. She's right, it's really different there. Get a loan at Five Point and get 1% cash back. Five Point Credit Union, serving the community for over 80 years. Come to the Museum of the Gulf Coast, where our area collection of the Jurassic period meets Janis Joplin with 60 plus Music Hall of Fame musicians, head coach Jimmy Johnson, Bum and Wade Phillips with 60 plus sports legends, and more than 35 notable people. Discover the arrival of early man to our area and the Civil War in the Gulf Coast region. Learn the stories behind this and so much more. Open seven days a week. Museum of the Gulf Coast, a museum like no other. LoneStarGridiron.com. Access the complete history of Texas high school football, over 100 years of information, win-loss records, coaching histories, individual stats, records, and more. Lone Star Gridiron, the authority on Texas high school football. Country Inn and Suites, Tyler's best hotel within minutes of dining, shopping, and entertainment. Enjoy group rates for teams, weddings, and reunions. There's a business center and 24-hour fitness facility. Country Inn and Suites in Tyler. I love this country. Go dogs. This is Tex Ritter Park Heritage Museums located here in historic Boston Avenue in Nederland. Of course, few coaches have had the kind of success against Port Natchez Groves that current Bulldogs head coach Larry Newman has had. In fact, they're trying to make it six consecutive wins and what has become a very streaky rivalry. I hadn't been involved, but in 22 of them as a head coach, every time we play them, we try to make sure our team understands we're just part of this thing. 
and we want to represent Nederland, not just the year we play in this rivalry, but all those great teams, those great years that we had in the rivalry previous to us, and the ones that are going to come after us. Newman's Bulldogs won 29 consecutive district games from 2010 to 2014, which ended in a 57-56 double overtime loss to Goose Creek Memorial. With Larry Newman on the coaching staff, Nederland is 16-6 versus PNG. During this current five-game winning streak, four of the last five Bulldog victories were decided in the fading seconds. It won't be easy, and we prepare every year for this game, expecting to have to win the last play. There is no underdog, there is no favorite in this one because it's it's kind of even keel when PNG and Nederland play each other. I've known Larry for a long time, but the main thing about Larry you Newman, he is a heck of a competitor. The winningest coach in PNG history was Matt Burnett, who took over a program that was in great shape when Danny Malone stepped down. I had a lot of good coaches for sure and, and a lot of dedicated kids to get that done over a long period of time. Under Burnett, the Indians compiled some of the most productive offensive numbers in school history. My goal as a head coach was to coach a football game as a head coach in Ashton. That was a big feat for the 99 team to play four games in one year in the Ashdome, starting with the state championship game. We played against Art Bryles and the Stephenville. He wanted to get his offense inside. He agreed to play at the Ashdome, and there was 39,000 people. It, it was a heck of a, a game. PNG wrapped up an amazing season with a hard-fought 28-18 loss, finishing 14-2. <laughs> From the fans to the bands, PNG plays Cherokee while the Bulldogs of Nederland tune up to the Aggie Warhill. I thought you was talking about that Cherokee. <laughs> it makes me sick, and most of the time I'm glad they didn't play it because I'd be puking. <laughs> if you grew up in Port Natchez or Groves, you've heard Cherokee since the probably the very first day you went to school, if not before that. It fits in with the culture around here, just the football atmosphere all the time. I love it because Cherokee plays whenever we do something really good on the game. The best feeling in the world is just stepping in that end zone and hearing your Cherokee blaring in the background. It's awesome. Uh, it drives me a little crazy because it gets pretty loud. I mean, uh, they, play, they play it a few times a game. It, it does drive you crazy a little bit on the field. We're here at Bulldog Stadium in Nederland, the site of last year's first annual Bum Phillips Bowl, and what a game it was. It came down to the wire, a 35-28 finish won by Nederland. Gary Mallory Field, Nederland, Texas. The atmosphere is electric. It's a shame that every kid that plays high school football can't experience a night in an atmosphere like this. Takes the ball, hands it to Kraut, touchdown, Nederland. So the Bulldogs get first blood, Austin Kraut. Say with the keeper, bounces it outside, he's broken containment, gets inside the 20, a great move, gets him to the five, Sage Say, touchdown. What a run by Sage Say. Look at this, he bounces outside. Now right here, you might think about going out of bounds. No, he's not going out of bounds. He's going to bounce off a couple of secondary guys carry a tackler into the end zone. Well, that's not the way PNG wanted this half to start. Again, fake the handoff. Moore sets up, going deep for the home run ball. Got a man. Bart, Touchdown. Wide open. Touchdown. And that's what you needed. Now from the power foot. Touchdown. They for take save. Three yards. We've had touchdowns on the first three possessions of the second half. Morris rolls to his right. Oh, and that's a touchdown. I tell you what. Caleb Sparks, Sparks is going to outrun everybody. 72 yards. They fake the speed sweep. Say throws deep. Going He's got deep. a guy open. Connor Perkins. Touchdown! Whoa, touchdown! Goodness, what a football game. Quarterback Adam Morse rolls to his left. Special route into the corner. Morris has to try and take it himself. He's going to be tackled at the three. Needleland holds ball game. 35 to 28. Needleland defeats Port Davis Rose. At practice, we work every single week on that last play. It's the last play that matters. And tonight, that's what it came down to the last play. This game right here is the biggest game in the state of Texas. This year's battle moves over to the reservation, home of the Port Natchez Groves Indians. In fact, this game will be the 92nd meeting between these two storied programs. What started in 1925, PNG holds a 12 game advantage over Nederland, 48 to 36, with seven ties. I mean, both of them are winners, and both of them are winning programs, and both of them have 
great pride. So dedicating it to my dad is, is something that our family uh, is always going to cherish. It's a great trophy. It adds a lot to the rivalry. Uh, Bum Phillips was a special man, great coach, you know, worked at both schools. And, uh, you know, Wade was a quarterback here at PNG. So it's, it's a special game for us, and we're going to do everything we can to, to bring it back to PNG. It demonstrates and commemorates a great man in, in a lot of different ways outside just football coaching. It's great to have him connected to this rivalry. Hey, Jeff, how you doing, man? I'm good, I'm good. On October 18th of 2013, O.A. Bum Phillips passed away right here on his ranch about 10 miles south of Goliad. In fact, Bum is buried right here on the 250 acres of property. The amazing thing is, when Bum passed away, Port Natchez Groves was playing Nederland on that Friday night, and the game was tied at seven in the third quarter. It was amazing. Wade was listening on the internet. Games tied 7-7 seven, seven when Bum passed away, and Wade had a terrific quote. He said, uh, it couldn't have been better. This is what my dad would have wanted. His two favorite schools were tied when he took his last breath. Awesome quote. It's so appropriate that Mid-County Madness now carries the name of Bum Phillips. It's such a great, great deal. Bum Phillips Charities was created by Bum and Debbie Phillips in 2010. They've donated considerable acreage of their Goliad area ranch to create the Bum Phillips Retreat. The first of five stages is complete, hosting activities including a summer camp for deaf children called Camp Heart Sign, with conferences to teach American Sign Language with interpreter training. Bum used to say if he won the great big lottery, that he'd love to build a place, I'm sorry, that he'd love to build a place where all of his friends could come and stay and visit. They're not gonna get to visit him now, but we can still share. And that's what we wanna do. God gave us this beautiful place and he gave us the heart for other people. I wanna see it finished and I wanna see it. The, the blessing for us is the joy and the and the growth that we see in every person that comes. Go to info at bumphillipscharities.com. We leave you with some of the thoughts from those who spoke at Lakewood Church in Houston at the Bum Phillips Memorial. This place would have been wall to wall with the impact that he made inside the prisons that he went in with me the last 12 years. Players would get a nice round of applause, your Warren Moons, your Bruce Matthews, and your Ray Childresses and stuff. Well, when Bum got off the bus, the big cheer went up and everybody couldn't wait to see Bum and he had to wave to the crowd and had to shake everybody's hand on, on his way into the hotel. He was that magical a character. And Love You Blue will never die. Love You Blue will live forever in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls. And I wish Gary Kubiak, Wade, I hope you guys go to a Super Bowl and I hope this city proves me wrong. <laughs>